Hi everyone, it is Emma and Siobhan here from A Vogel. Um, so my name is Emma Thornton. I'm a qualified nutritionist and I have the lovely Siobhan Carroll here, who is a naturopath, a herbalist and a yoga teacher. And Siobhan does clinical work over in Ireland as well as working for the A Vogel team here in the UK. And I'm mainly based here um, in the UK A Vogel team where I work on the helpline um, with customers and doing many consultations and things. So today we are trying a bit of a new concept. Um, as many of you all know, we have our blogs and our video blogs on the website already. But today we're taking a topic in terms of periods and PMS health and problem skin, and we're turning it into a bit of a case study um, conversation. So we're going to talk through a real life example from Siobhan's clinic. And then we're going to try and tease apart some of the underlying causes and, of course, help um, offer some solutions as well. So I'm just going to pass over to Siobhan in a sec. So she'll talk through this case study and then we'll talk you through some of the solutions. Thanks so much, Emma, um, and welcome, everybody. So um, this is a case study of a 23 year old girl who we're going to call Tanya for the um, sake of the, the video. Um, and she had been on the pill. Um, for um, over six years and four months before she came to see me she came off the pill and her um, acne which um, was quite bad before she went on the pill had come back and um, kind of worse than ever and um, she was worried about her hormone levels because her periods hadn't come back yet. So this is a really really common situation um, where um, women are put on the pill and um, or girls when they're um, still teenagers and they you know, might be put on it, you know, for, you know, good reasons of contraception, but also other reasons where they're trying to control symptoms like heavy periods or acne or whatever it might be. Um, and then when they come off the pill, the symptoms come back with a vengeance. So, um, so many different factors were, were playing into this, but the kind of the root issue here was that, um, you know, the, the, I suppose the, the presenting issue, I guess we'll say first, is that you know she'd come off the pill and her hormones were a little bit out of balance. But the root issue was much deeper than that because this was present before she went on the pill. So other things, she had a you know a busy, um, busy life, a stressful job, and she was traveling a lot, and um, so she was eating a lot of food on the go, and um, not always going for the healthiest options. Um, and she said she had a very sweet tooth, so she does enjoy um, a lot of treats and um, cups of coffee with sugar <laughs> that keep her fueled throughout the day. So there were a lot of different things um, going on that we needed to address here. And um, yeah, we'll have a look through and, and talk about some, um, some of the things that helped herbs and um, lifestyle changes as well. Yeah, great Siobhan. Yeah, so we've just tried to um, pull out some of the key themes here that that could be um, affecting Tanya and, and creating this problem skin. So we try at Evogel and in Siobhan's clinic to, to really tease out some of the underlying root causes, as Siobhan has said. Um, so with skin, it can be quite tempting just to apply topical applications and try and manage skin issues that way. But here we're, we're really looking to delve a little bit deeper and try to tease out some of the key themes here that could um, as a whole be contributing to Tanya's symptoms. So first on our list here, we're going to just delve into these in a little bit more detail, is, is that ho hormone imbalance. Um, so as Siobhan had said, um, you know, Tanya was put on the, the pill years ago and for, for contraceptive use, which is fine, but also to try and um, address the skin complaints. So Whilst she was on the pill for the contraception, it might have been the case that the, the skin had improved. Um, but again, we're not really um, targeting the, the underlying problem there um, in terms of potentially that hormone imbalance, which was already existing. And we've then perhaps masked it only through the use of the hormonal contraceptives. So then it is a quite a common scenario that when someone comes off the pill, that the old issues can, can then flag up again um, if that kind of natural hormone imbalance hasn't really been addressed. Um, so what I would say, first of all, is that, that Tanya has only been off the pill for quite a relatively short space of time. Um, so we would be slightly cautious with that and we perhaps wouldn't want to jump straight in with, with hormone, um, hormone balancing remedies. We maybe just want to give a few more months just so Tanya's 
natural um, hormone balance can resume. And then we would take it from there depending on, on what that looks like. Um, but the fact that Tanya has not had her period back yet could suggest that she's perhaps a little bit low in estrogen. Um, and, and skin complaints can quite often crop up when people are low in estrogen and kind of longer, longer cycles or less frequent periods can in some cases be a sign that that could be an issue. So that would just be one thing to consider as we're trying to kind of monitor those, those symptoms. Then we also have the scenario where Agnes Cassis, for example, might come in handy. Um, and that, that's quite often if someone is estrogen dominant. So it might not be this case in, in Tanya's case, um, situation, but again, we're going to try and monitor that a little bit longer. Um, but some, in some cases, estrogen dominance can give rise to kind of heavier, more frequent periods. Um, and in some cases, especially after ovulation, um, as estrogen levels fall, um, if, they've, if they've fallen from a more a high kind of more dominant state, then in some cases, skin complaints could crop up in that second half of the cycle in the lead up to, to someone's period. So that might be a pattern that emerges there in terms of um, those skin complaints that we're, we're talking about. Um, so Siobhan, in terms of your clinical um, experience, um, in terms of hormone imbalance and Agnes Cassis, have you found this remedy often quite helpful for that problem skin? Yeah, um, it, it can be helpful with problem skin. Again, it depends on the individual. Um, the reason why for Tanya it's, it, it can be a helpful herb is um, because it does, um, kind of regardless of the, the kind of estrogen progesterone balance after coming off, the um the pill it can be a really really helpful herb to get things back um back on track um it's uh, a really really nice one for um yeah rebalancing the hormones after the synthetic hormone that's been kind of putting things out of whack a little bit um, yeah so um for um for skin issues yeah it, it depends on the person yeah great no it's definitely one to consider though and one that could be helpful in a lot of cases we think yeah so. I think the point that just to highlight the point that you said about premenstrual acne so yeah. if the acne is coming up just in the days before your period um, it's often a sign that maybe you're it's, it's due to, to higher levels of estrogen that are um are dropping and then being cleared out of your body and um, yeah. what we're going to talk about next where mm -hmm. really, that really comes into play is even though it might be a bit of a hormone imbalance the other issue that, that we're working with there is the channels of elimination that need mm -hmm. to be um, nourished, particularly the liver that are going to help process these extra hormones to help get them out of our yeah. bodies. Because when the liver is kind of overwhelmed with the, the higher levels of estrogen, then um, the skin is our other organ of detoxification that can take over along with the, the bowel. So mm -hmm. um, that's often when it pops up, I, I find. Um, yeah yeah exactly that again we're always trying to get to that root problem so although hormones might be more obvious and you know we think that that's what's causing it then taking a further step back you're going to be looking at digestion and, and liver health um as well so that's where another that's where another product such as our digestive for example could come in and um, and this might present you might present with um digestive symptoms um, or they, they might be milder, but ultimately the liver is a key digestive organ that's, that's going to process out those excess hormones. Um, so yeah, the, the digestive zone is, is licensed for some of the more obvious um, digestive sim symptoms such as indigestion or flatulence, um, which um, you know Tanya might be struggling with. But again, we're going to go on and explore other areas in terms of diet, and there might be a whole number of factors there which are also contributing. Um, but we do go back to digestion as being quite central to our overall health, um, and particularly where hormone imbalance um, is, is also relevant. And what I would say is that our digestive zone is, is a complex and it contains a number of herbal um, ingredients such as your baldo and um, artichoke dandelion. And then we also have um, our milk thistle in, in our range as well, which is actually a really similar combination of herbal ingredients, but it's got the milk thistle ingredient in there as well, which is particularly um, protective um, of the liver. 
Um, so Siobhan Milk Thistle, I think this is another favourite of yours. Um, do you just want to talk a little bit about how Milk Thistle could potentially fit in there as well? Yeah, Milk Thistle and artichoke and dandelion, they're all you know, great herbs for the liver. Um, just as you were talking there, um, I, I think it's important to highlight, we, we talk so much about the liver as herbalists and, and nutritionists, you know, um, but I, I often think it's um, not really understood by the, you know, average person who doesn't, um, you know, work in our field every day. Um, and a really, for, for in this case with Tanya, like a really good um, indication of whether the liver might need support is how the rest of the digestion is too. Um, so even, you know, with these more obvious symptoms like the kind of indigestion or a lot of flatulence, um, another really good symptom is constipation. Um, and the um, with Tanya, and this happens a lot with people when they travel a lot, then they're, um, they're maybe less likely to go when they're away. So she would always get a little bit constipated when she was traveling. Um, and when we talk about constipation, really, you need to be going once every day. Um, without straining and a lot of people um, you know would think constipation is maybe after a few days but if you're not pooing every day mm -hmm. um, then you know these liver herbs um, as well as eating a lot more fiber in your diet um, and reducing the processed foods is all going to help yeah um, so um, that's just kind of I suppose an indication of when when the liver might need extra extra support but even if you never, you almost never fart. I mean, I read recently that something like up to 30, 30 farts a day is, is normal, <laughs> which seems like a lot to me, but anyway. <laughs> um, but even if you were one of these people who say, I never fart and you never get any indigestion um, and you're getting this, this acne in your premenstrual days particularly, um, but really any kind of acne, I think any kind of acne at all, um, it, it's a sign that your your body is trying to get rid of something through the skin. There's some impurities yeah. that are in your body that are trying to come out that need some extra support because the other channels of elimination aren't doing their yeah. job efficiently. So um, any kind of acne, I think, even if you don't have the digestive system, symptoms, it's worth taking herbs to support your liver. Definitely, yeah. No, thanks, Siobhan. That's really, really interesting. And just talking about constipation, um, that's moving us nicely into the next theme that we want to touch on and, and that's drinking enough water. So especially in, in a situation like Tanya's where she's really busy, she's on the go, it can be quite easy to forget to drink enough water. Um, and just as you talked about the, um, the passages of elimination and the liver and you know water really helps almost every system in the body, if not every single one. And so from the internal um, organs to the skin, water is going to be super beneficial in so many ways. Um, and constipation in particular, the, the two quite often go hand in hand. Um, so I think it's something that people might assume they're, they're getting enough, but they're not really tracking their amount or they, um, they, they're drinking too much tea and coffee and assume that that counts towards their, their water intake, which I think um, Tanya has been a little bit guilty of as well um, and just a tip in terms of of water I often say to people they don't like the taste to try and add some herbs and or fruit slices and, and things just to jazz it up and um, I don't know if you've got any particular tips Siobhan in your clinic just to try and encourage people to drink a little bit more. Almost every client that I see says yes I drink I drink a good amount of water <laughs> and they never do <laughs> very rarely in fact so one of the most important things is um you know we get have this idea of eight glasses a day but there's you know there's very different sizes of glasses um so what I always drink out of is this kind of this is a little bottle of glass bottle um, and I find that really helpful for myself to measure my my, my amount of water and yeah. um, but it's also to know how much water that you need to drink so everyone is different men and women are different um, if you exercise a lot, it's different. If you're in a hot country or the summer versus the winter, it's different. Um, and if, you know, say if you're breastfeeding, it's different. Um, and then it's also different depending on your body weight. So there are some really handy calculators. You don't have to remember all this. Some really handy, handy calculators online that mm -hmm. can help you to figure out exactly how much water you drink. So I actually drink three litres of water a day because um, I'm breastfeeding a, um, at the moment. Um, um, because of my body weight so I'm, I've measured those out and I aim for three water three liters every day um, and yeah. so you know that's much more than the vast majority of people drink 
Mm -hmm. um, but I know that when I don't reach that three liters, I start to feel a little bit more tired and my energy levels when I do get three liters in is mm -hmm. completely yeah. different. So um, once, once you're fully hydrated, it's a game changer um, yeah. for energy as well and for so many other processes in our body, but also for our skin and for our digestion. Definitely. I know. And it's so interesting how individual it is. And that's, you know, we're talking here about trying to really tune into your own body and, and tailor it to suit. So that, that's really interesting. So um, thank you, Siobhan. Um, just another quick uh, point we're going to talk about very briefly here. Um, again, with Tanya and the current climate, she's been wearing masks quite a lot and potentially that could affect skin. Um, you know, with ever-changing restrictions, it, this might be easing slightly in a lot of places, but it's just something we wanted to mention because it might be something, again, people haven't really, um, you know, they don't assume that the mask has an, had an effect on skin, where in fact it could. Um, so Siobhan, if you want to just maybe say a few words about this, about, again, your experience in clinic um, in this area. Absolutely. When you're, you know, you're covering the skin and, um with any with anything um you're you're not getting maybe the you know as much airflow and all these other things that are helpful for keeping the clear the skin and allowing it to clear um the big problem i find is with people who are re-wearing their masks over and over again and then there's so then there's bacteria and maybe mold and different things that are you know you can't see it it looks clean um but it's contributing to spots um it's kind of an older example before all of this stuff was um i would Sometimes see it with people who have fringes. So if they are, are prone to, you know, particularly oily skin, you might get spots under your fringe. Um, and even though um, people would think like, oh, it's great because at least it covers my spots, um, they're much better off keeping the, the hair off their skin so that the um, the spots can clear. So yeah. um, it's a similar but very different situation, I guess. Um, and um, you know, for people who say did have to wear masks and and, and didn't have another alternative. Um, this kind of silk face mask where I found for people to be the least problem causing for their skin. Um, but, you know, now, now that it's optional, I would always recommend taking it off if you've got a lot of spots, um, if, yeah. if you feel comfortable, I suppose. Great. Yeah, no, it's just another little area to consider. And um, we're just trying to hit all those key points um, for people to consider. So just another interesting snippet there. Um, so next, we're just going to touch a little bit um, on diet. Um, so yeah, as a nutritionist, it's a common question. Um, what can I eat to help with this issue? Or, or what can I cut out? People are, can get quite um, hung up on, on individual ingredients. So I don't want to delve too much into in, individual ingredients and being very prescriptive. But from Tanya's um, case study in particular, I think with her lifestyle, she's quite um, on the go and and she seems to favour convenience foods um, in order to help, she assumes to help fuel her through. Um, so that includes a lot of processed foods that have a lot of sugars and artificial sweeteners and additives in there. Generally quite high in unhealthy fats and low in fibre. Um, she also um, has admitted she's got quite a caffeine habit as well. And the thing with a lot of these ingredients is they are quite stimulating and they kind of ignite your internal stress response. So the caffeine, the refined sugars, um, that can affect your internal stress response, which we're going to go on and talk about in a bit more detail. Um, but that kind of, it, it can trigger other chemicals within your system, such as histamine, which can generally give rise to quite red and, and inflamed skin as well. So really my advice here um, is to try and strip it back and go back to basics, trying to include lots of whole foods um, and, and that will be beneficial for a number of reasons. So the less processed the foods are, the more fibre in there and that's super beneficial for your gut health, the digestion, which has been quite a big focus for us today but also lots of your key nutrients as well. So as foods are processed, unfortunately they lose their nutrients and they lose their fiber. Um, so lots of your lovely vitamin C, vitamin A, zinc, these are particularly beneficial um, for your skin. Um, vitamin A, vitamin C, they're antioxidants, they're very protective of your skin. They help to fend off free radicals um, which, are, which can damage your skin. And once skin becomes damaged, it's then more susceptible, susceptible to infection as bacteria and things can get in as well. So 
we can work towards trying to reduce some of the more stimulating kind of pro-inflammatory ingredients, such as those we mentioned, the caffeine, the refined sugar, the bad, bad fats. Not only that, but we can actually add in lots more beneficial nutrients as well. And they're going to be lovely whole um, plant-based sources of nutrients, you know, food sources that your body can then recognize um, and, and break down and use um, a little bit better. Um, so that's a bit of information on diet, Siobhan. I don't know if I've covered most things there or if there's anything um, you would like to add before we just move on to the, the final point. Yeah, um, I think for Tanya, because she was traveling so much, one of the biggest things that, that helped her was um, starting to read the ingredients on things. You know, um, also, you know, every petrol station that you would stop in, there's fresh fruit available, you know, which she didn't even know, you know, we don't often even see these things because they often place them up so high on the shelves and things like that, you know, they're, um, it's never what's at the, at the cash register. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, just being aware of the things that are available, checking the ingredients and seeing that there are, you know, even in the airport and places now, there are a lot of he healthier options that come in packages. Um, so opting for those when possible and also I think um, things like batch cooking can be really great for, for busy yeah. people and, and you know making large batches of things on a Sunday and, and bringing them with you on the road so those are those are some things that can help too. Definitely yeah I'm a big batch cooking fan myself so absolutely and um, so yeah we're just going to quickly um, finish on on the topic of stress as well. I think in today's society it's so common for for people to be in states of chronic stress if, if they've got a busy um, home life, busy jobs, and, and that stress can be kind of lurking under the surface and, and can be quite chronic and, and difficult to sift. So situations of stress are obviously so individual in terms of um, how, how much control you have over the situations, but of course there are certainly um, areas that you can control in terms of how you can work in relaxation techniques or, or, or introduce some helpful remedies here. Um, and as we've we've touched on, stress can be ben, um, detrimental for a number of reasons, particularly your digestion. Actually, um, as as we're stressed, that can somewhat shut down your digestion. And we know we know that the majority of our immune system actually lies in our our digestive tract as well. So that can then go on to have um, negative impact on your skin in terms of the histamine that we've mentioned, um, and it can turn into to quite a vicious cycle so it's just another area that with skin we might not necessarily assume that that stress is going to be a big contributor but actually it is another key area that, that people might need to um, just be a little bit more aware of um, so there's some we've got some remedies um, mentioned here if you um, you assume that stress might be a factor for you um, so we've got the, the stress relief um, daytime over here in the UK. Um, so that combines your bleeding and hops. Um, and we've also got the Pathiflora um, tablets. Pathiflora is another lovely um, herbal ingredient and, and lovely nutrients in there as well in, in the Pathiflora tablets. So some zinc and magnesium. Magnesium is another such a lovely all-rounder nutrient it, it helps support us both physically and mentally and it's something that can become quite drained in situations of stress as well so just when we mentioned all the lovely whole foods that's a great way to get your magnesium but sometimes just a little bit extra in, in supplement form can be can be really useful and um, so anything you'd like to add around the area of stress um, and skin Siobhan just to see things up just that I think all of us in this day and age could benefit from taking herbs for stress um they are such wonderful supportive allies in these really stressful times and you know you don't have to have huge anxiety or um you know be under a severely stressful situation for your nervous system to benefit from for some herbs from stress every single client i see i get some sort of herbs for their nervous system in their in their formula so it's yeah. um yeah yeah Great. Well, that was great, Siobhan. Thank you so much um, for joining me today. Um, I hope everyone's enjoyed it and I will be sure to put any links or, and product mentions in the description. Um, and please also, if you've enjoyed this 
um, session today, please do subscribe to our Avogel YouTube channel and also hit the bell icon where you will be notified of any future videos that we do. We hope to do more uh, videos in this format and the kind of case study um, format. So thanks again, everyone, and I'm sure we'll all speak to you soon. Thanks so much.